Oh yeah, I think I'm I'm metal to the core pretty much, but I love all kinds of music. Whatever is intense, whatever is real, whatever is honest. I love it as hard as it can get. I love it hardcore and I love it super sensitive and, and you know and, and deep. I really really love like anthems and I love sometimes ballads when you know when they're a little bit dark but um yeah but doing like pop uh, this would be impossible and, <laughs> and for many years always like the record companies they always try to get a pop song on the record and oh it was like you know we always were fighting it and um yeah, but there were always big discussions when we were like on major labels. Everybody always wanted to have a hit, but I think for us it never worked because you have to do what you feel. You know, the fans pick up on it; they know what's real. So I, I never want to do a pop song ever. <laughs> but some other stuff, you know, I'm I'm open. You know, I'm I'm open whatever. You know, and I love collaborating with other people. And I did a couple of things on other. Um, Bands records. Um, the newest uh, collaboration was with um, Saitatio Mortis, and I have a cool song. It's called Salome, and I was the Salome. And, uh, it was actually it was very interesting. So check it out. It's, it's cool. It's different. And um, yeah, I did with, uh, After Forever. Now we got Bass, our new guitar player. After Forever, they unfortunately split up, but Bass is now with us, and uh, we are friends for many many years so he asked me if I want to do one song on, on the last album I really did and it came out really nice I think and so yeah so I'm, I'm totally open but anything goes without or uh, anything goes unless it's pop so <laughs> um, actually usually when I fall asleep you know sometimes I have like some nice melodies in my head and usually the lyric and the melody it goes hand in hand and then I always have to make sure that I sing it on a little tape player or on my cell phone and um, because I, I forget it the next day usually it's gone but I feel like things which are coming out deep deep like from the soul from the heart that's usually like the best and um, and other things yeah sometimes we write like from from a cool riff but I, I prefer to have the the lyrics first, or like that I know what I want to write about. On the Fear No Evil album, the very first song which I wrote was like, I lay my head upon my sword because I thought I want to do like a cool, symbolic anti war song. So that was very important to me. And the second song was like, The Night of the Warlock because we celebrated our 25th anniversary. And then I thought, oh, maybe this would be great for all the warlock song for all the warlock fans to have a warlock song so yeah so certain things are like yeah th certain things are just coming out and uh, and another one was herz blood i had this idea for many years but it never never seemed right this year it seemed right so but um yeah every song comes out different there's like no formula i just i just do what i feel and and write from the gut and from the heart. Yes, yeah, sometimes like when I have a melody, like for example, I lay my head upon my sword. The melody was there right away. I lay my head upon my sword, and then I figured out the chords, and I thought, oh, that's that's pretty nice. So, and then I just uh, finished it by myself because I didn't need any help. But in other situations, and when I feel oh, I have a nice melody, and then sometimes I go to my guitar player and I say, hey, you know, check out, you know kind of chords you would choose and pick so but sometimes I make a little demo and then I give it to people and when I feel oh somebody's like totally interested or can see like the idea then it's good but um, you know any which way and sometimes when I feel oh that's a nice ballad and you know and I can and in New York was actually my first time that I sang a German song I never thought I would ever do a German song because back then it was pretty pretty you know Pretty unheard of, and um, but it just came out like a, like the deep inside my heart for Emma. This melody was on there, and then I figured it out with Joey. He was like uh, back then he was a guitar player, and and he produced the record, and then you know, and then we always figured out the chords together. Usually I hear them in my head, and then when somebody plays the right one, ah, that's the one. And then if it's wrong, ah, that's not the right one. So um, yeah, but this one was like written. From the melody and the lyrics first, and then everything else just like fell into place. 
usually you have the feeling you know where it has to go, how it has to sound, which chords you have to pick. If somebody knows you well, yeah, actually, from deep inside my heart, actually six drummers played like the drums on it, like the drum rolls, and it was like it was it was very complicated. But on uh, the Triumph and Agony album, Cozy Powell played the drums as well, and that was awesome. And I love Cozy, and um, yeah, yeah. It depends on the song, and sometimes we do a couple of arrangements for the same song, and then we pick. Ah, oh, okay, this is a better arrangement. Uh, yeah, but um, yeah, usually, usually you can tell, you can feel whatever's right for the song. And so, from having the song for such a long time in the set list, sometimes you feel where the song wants to go and what it needs, and then you add certain things, and then when it sounds better with more drums or more guitar, so. Um, you know, sometimes like a song can grow too. Like when you first write it and then record it, put it on the record. Sometimes it's not, it's, it's not the true magic. It's not the, the truth about about it. It needs to grow. And then a couple of times when you play it live, then you know, ah, oh, the song needs to be much more, you know, heavier or slower or like more intense. So sometimes recordings, they're like, you know, it's so new that, um, you know, I, I feel it's certain songs, they can, they can grow. And uh, when you do them a little bit different, then they're much nicer, much more powerful. But, um, yeah, but I usually agree. when you write a song and then you put it on a record, you try to do it the best you can. But then later on, after a couple of weeks, months or years, it's, you know, it's getting better and better. And it depends on... Uh, on the people, you know, certain guitar players or drummers, they hear it different and then they add to it and they have like cool ideas. So uh, I would say, yeah, there are maybe three songs which I think they stick out. Definitely one is deep inside my heart for Emma. And even though it's like half in German, a little English, like we always play it worldwide and it seems to, to touch the people really deep and it is really intense and I, I think that's nice. And, Another one is Love Me in Black. We haven't played it tonight, but usually that always gets like great reactions. I think that's that's right on the level of Emma. And all we are, because it makes it's like such a such a positive um, lyric, like you know, it feels like, you know, okay and like you know you know, it feels like we are all united and you know, all we are is all we need. It's like very simple but very effective and yeah, I think yeah, these three I, I'm probably the most happy about. But it depends. Sometimes I love the heavier stuff, and then sometimes I love like you know mellower depends stuff. Depends on the mood. Depends on my mood, you know. Depends on like you know the kind of situation I'm in. You know, sometimes I love the depressive stuff too. You know, so um, a kiss and kiss alive too. Oh, oh. that album I loved so much, and yeah, Metallica, Kill 'Em All. And um, Priest, probably all the records, except I love Except too, and Dio, and um, yeah, Megadeth, uh, In My Darkest Hour. I love that song so much, and uh, yeah, certain, certain songs I, I, just, I just can hear any, any day and any, you know, any time. And um, White Snake, um, I must say, like, don't break my heart again. I was a sucker for that. And ACDC touched too much. And, you know, so many, so many, so many great songs. I, I can't probably name them all, but, you know, and, and if I'm in a different mood, I love Pink Floyd too, you know, whatever, whatever, you know, whatever gets to me. I was a little yeah. girl when I was three years old. There wasn't any metal back then. And I fell in love with one song. It was like Little Bitch of Lucille. And I was just like, you know, old enough, like three years old to, you know, to to get the record going. And, oh, and I had like my little record player and I played the song day and night, day and night. And, you know, my parents, they were already like worried that the little girl is like not, you know, not like, uh, not interested in anything else than <laughs> music. And I was like, I think addicted from the time I was three and little Richard did it. And then later on, I grew up in the glam rock, um, times like with T-Rex, Sweet Slade, Susie Quadro, Alice Cooper, it was when I was like seven, eight, nine, and then actually I wanted to have my, my own band and I wanted to become a singer. And then, and then when I was 
was like 16, I had my first mm. band, and then there uh, was like more staffing. And, yeah, and then a couple of bands later, we formed Orlock, and it was actually then our big break. You know, I, I always felt comfortable being a, a girl or being a woman. It was always cool, and I always felt respected by the fans and by the other musicians right away, like from the first concert on. I think there was never a problem, and I think music and metal, it's above that all. I think it doesn't matter where you're from, it doesn't matter if you're a man or, or a woman. And I think if I would have been a man, I would I would have done probably exactly the same. I would have probably seen. You were a bit not Lemmy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But, now, but I was always treated very good. By, sometimes, like, you know, people were making up stories or like all in the press that were writing about it, but I always felt good. And I was always treated very good, like, really good. And it's, you know, it's, you have to work with what you have, you know. But, and then now I'm actually, I'm happy there's so many more women doing it and like way talented women. So it's, I love when you win. She had such a, such a great attitude and I love her. And Lee Aaron uh, from Canada. Yeah. I love her. And of course, <laughs> of course, girls who, you know, we're friends since the early 80s. And um, yeah, so there were a couple of women and I loved Anne Wilson of Heart. And so, um, yeah, but now they are like, Tons of great, great female singers of all kinds of metal genres. And on the Fear No Evil album, we uh, we wrote one song. It's called Celebrate, and there are actually three versions on it. One is with the fans, like a big choir. One is with Biff of Saxon, and one is and um, and yeah. But the full metal female version, it has like all the great women of today, like you know Angela of Arch Enemy is on there. And, oh. And um, yeah, and Liv from Size and uh, Floor from After Forever, Girl School, everybody is on there. Liv from uh, Sister Sin. And then I thought, this might be so cool to have like all the women like, you know, doing a metal song and with all different metal genres from super hardcore to, you know, to gothic. So, and I think it worked well. So if you guys want to check it out, it's on the scene. And I think it came out really good. And it was so much fun doing it. Man, I want to I wanna say thank you to all the Norwegian fans and that you guys have been so supportive for all these years and I, I hope that we will be back very soon and hear like all oh, the, the gigs were awesome and you know, you're great, you have a great metal heart here, so keep it up and all the best and I love you, Phil. Metal.